morning. Today is October the 1st in this 2020 year of our Lord. It's Wednesday, a new month, beautiful fall day here in Myrtle Beach, blue skies, clear air, and uh, cool temperatures. It was an early morning for Vanita, for Vanita and I this morning to go down to the uh, uh, SC Ortho uh, for some injections. I had a transdural epidural steroid injections in the L L3 and L5, and uh, those went well. It's the second in a uh, series of three that I'll receive for lower back pain. And uh, the good news is that there's no real pain, which is great. And the bad news is that I'm not supposed to do anything. So that's a bummer for a person that's uh, a little hyperactive and uh, overactive. So today we'll chill and uh, work on Sunday sermon, and that'll be all good. Today I'd like to talk about something that's, uh, I think, important to me, and I hope it's important to you, and that's the reality of community. We are uh, people that are not isolated. God did not create us to be by ourselves, nor do we choose to be unless we, well, some people may find it a lot easier to live just with themselves, but I find it's greater joy and, uh, and, and accomplishment in being in community and therefore I've chosen a life as a pastor in community uh, ministry and uh, that's the way I think God intended us to live our lives out. So we'll do a couple of little reading reflections on that. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the 12th chapter of Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable by God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body of Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have called the church into being and have gathered us into one family. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to live in unity and peace with all your children. May our actions this day be fruit of our faith in your kingdom. In the name of Christ, amen. An old rabbi was once asked why so few people were finding God. He wisely replied that people are not willing to look that low. Jesus was born in a stable. And God is especially concerned for the poorest, the lowliest, the lost, and the neglected. From Liberation of Life by Harvey and Louise Seifert. A reading from Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. But the reverse is also true. Let him who is not in community beware of being alone. Into the community you were called. The call was not meant for you alone. In the community of the called, you bear your cross, you struggle, you pray. You are not alone, even in death. And on the last day, you will be only one member of the great congregation of Jesus Christ. If you scorn the fellowship of the brethren, you reject the call of Jesus Christ. And thus your solitude can only be hurtful to you. If I die, then I am not alone in death. If I suffer, 
they, the fellowship, suffer with me. Martin Luther. An ancient saying suggests that there are two wings by which we rise, one being personal piety and the other community charity. No one can fly by flapping only one wing. It's impossible to be sincere in our worship of God without expecting to do the will of God. It is equally impossible to do the full will of God without the guidance and empowerment of a vital personal relationship with God. As Alan Hunter has said, those who picket should also pray, and those who pray should also picket. The same combination of devotional vitality and social action is also emphasized in the two great commandments of Jesus, to love God with all of one's being and to love other persons as ourselves, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And that is a quote from Liberation of Life by Harvey and, and Lois Seifert. The life we have been given is a life into a world in which we are those who bear the very image of God, the very likeness of God, who created, who crafted in love. And he crafted us not to be alone, but that we would be in community, in fellowship one with another. I'm thankful that for 49 years I've had the companionship of a spouse, of Benita, and together we've done remarkable things and some not so remarkable things. But I cannot imagine what life would be like in the loneliness of solitude. I have a circle of friends that I cherish, and I'm grateful for new friends that come along the way. I've had opportunity to minister in see one two three four five different congregations in the course of almost 45 years of ministry community in which people have joined together over the common cause of proclaiming god's word through words and actions that have transformed a small portion of the worlds where we've lived and i think that's the the measure of one's life to be not solitary and solitude in accomplishments, to achieve greatness in the person, but to help others to accomplish greatness for the sake of the world. So consider your walk of life in community this day. Find ways in which you can join with others on that great cause that God has given to help the world be that place that he crafted it to be. We do that not alone, but together. Thanks be to God for the opportunity, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the care that I've received this day for, for health concerns, that they might be alleviated and life might resume a, a sense of normalcy. And I thank you for doctors and technicians and nurses that can care for us in our time of need. I thank you continually for the healing that Vanita has experienced following surgery and the goodness of life that is being restored in her. I thank you for the singing of birds and the greeting of a new day with sunshine that rises predictably. And we give you thanks for the opportunities that lie before in this day. For some rest and renewal for others creative thinking and doing for others the work and labor that keeps things moving might they be productive and might your hand be at work and at play now here O oh lord our concerns that we share for others that have needs far greater than we for a troubled world continued to be plagued by a pandemic for wildfires that rage in western states, for famine that plagues portions of the world that we do not know of, but you certainly do, for the division of community caused by hatred, caused by the lack of the willingness to understand and appreciate each other as those created in your image, 
We pray for a healing of this world. And we ask that your kindness and care will look upon those that bear the burdens of life and that they might be able to do so gracefully and with the help of others. Hear now our prayers as we offer them on behalf of those for whom we would intercede this day. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God. Amen.